hi guys okay I'm a little rusty at this but let's just pretend I didn't just take a break from the internet out of the blue out of nowhere kind of like your ex that just hits you up like three months later is like hey what's up and you're like hey can you not so <laughs> how's it going um but today we're going to talk about finding clients and we're going to talk about how to know if they're a right fit now the devastating secret to finding clients is that there is no secret I'm so sorry to be the one to tell you um, I'm so sorry to, you know, those course creators who just want to tell you that, like, that one pitch is going to just make you a millionaire. Not that that's not a factor, not that pitches aren't a factor and all these things, but usually finding clients is like this multi-layered approach. I do have a video on, like, why you're not getting clients in my previous videos if you're already on the hunt and you're not landing them. That's the specific like diagnosis. This is more of a general overview of like starting to find clients and that whole process. So I have my notes here. Apologies, I know I should put them behind the camera so I can read them like a script and make it look better. But you know what? Here's where we are. Okay, so the secret to finding clients is that you have to become good at networking. Now, I want you to delete from your mind forever the thought of networking, everything that you know about it because at its absolute core, you know, networking is being interested in other people. You know, delete these like scam artists, disgusting people who like pick up artists. That's not networking. That's like, that's like the worst form. There's like nothing worse than people who are like pestering you when you like are not interested. Um, that is not networking. That is, that's, that's why those people are why Google has a spam filter, right? Uh, there's a whole entire folder dedicated to you suck at this. That's what that is. Good networking at its best is just, like I said, being interested in other people. Now, if you're starting as a copywriter or any kind of freelancer, more than anything, you kind of want to figure out industries that you're interested in. Doesn't mean you have to like dedicate your whole heart and soul to them. It doesn't mean anything like that. And the reason is because almost all of the clients I have found Yes, sometimes I have clients come and find me. For the most part, I focus on outbound strategy because I love it, right? You can create a whole inbound strategy, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit here, but which means the difference is inbound means they come to you, like they find you and outbound means you don't hunt them. I love the hunt. I'm like, oof. even when clients come to me, like that's fun, but I love the pursuit. I love the landing it. I love the pitching. Um, a lot of people don't and that's super fair. I've just grown to be disgusting in that way. Like a rejection is a fun, it's a challenge, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but I, I love the hunt. So that's just how I've built a lot of my career in my business. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of all of that. And along with how to know when you did them if they are a right fit. But back to my point. Now, the point and the reason for picking industries is that you're going to have to get involved in that industry, right? Um, you know, the, the problem I have with inbound client getting is that, first of all, you will never compete with agencies and SEO farms and all of that. If you think I can get number one SEO ranking for copywriter in Denver, you're absolutely drunk. <laughs> If you had any idea of the sheer amount of volume and effort that goes into these content mills and these font like and and the power and the Google like people paying for those spots, I think you'd throw up a little bit. Like it's the sheer um, like if you're a freelancer like me, a single team. Like sometimes I bring down a little help here and there, but that's pretty much it. And. I cannot compete if I spend all day writing, all day, every day writing to be the number one keyword for my career. I would still not be able to compete with these SEO farms and these things that are like churning five, you know, articles a day and they have a team of like 20 writers that they pay like a penny a word to that they just like churn, churn, churn and they're like... Competing with SEL people is hard. So an inbound strategy, 
let's just get that out of the way. If you want to focus on having clients come to you, you're going to have to play either the personality card really hard. You are going to have to write better than all of those stupid idiots out there who are just churning for keywords and they have no personality to their writing. That's how I do it for my clients and do it for myself is like I play hard on the personality. It's why I swear in my videos. It's why I'm snarky. It's why I'm, you know, all of that because I know I can't compete with these SEO firms and these SEO teams. I just, I have no interest. I don't want to, I'd have to hire writers. It's too much. Right. So, you know, and, and only I bring that up in regards to everybody thinks when it comes to getting clients, like they need to publish a blog. They need to have a kick-ass website. They need to, you know, all the focus is on me, 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 me. I need a social media strategy and those things matter. Those things matter. But so much of it is going to be, if you want to like, you can do all that and that's fine. But if you want the shortcut path to getting clients, it is being interested in other people and being involved in your industry. Okay. So back to, so that's inbound. So outbound is meaning you don't get them, right? You're going to hunt. So that means, okay. If you were sitting down and being like, I'm going to be a copywriter. Great. Bless. Welcome to the team. Cool. Okay. So you're going to pick industries that you're interested in and then you're going to subscribe to like, I almost said 500 YouTube channels, but like YouTube channels, blogs, follow people on Twitter, start following the wormholes of now be careful. Do not consume so much content that you're not like paralyzed mentally and you're just, oh, you're just consuming content all day instead of taking a high level approach to seeing who's in the industry. Okay. It's a little bit different, a little bit different. Um, I would at least include a ratio of like, you need to pitch like once per day or at least like something like that, like some kind of like action to all of that, like information that you're now learning. That's a whole nother video. I think I have a video on like uh, top, like advice overwhelm or something. Go watch that if, if you're at that point. Okay. Anyway, so outbound. So you're going to want to pitch some industries that you're interested in. This is how I have found almost all of my clients. So keep like, keep that in mind. This is it. This is the secret guys. Not to, I also have an ebook on my site if you want the actual 30 day action plan, but you don't need it. If you just want to implement this, save yourself some money. I'm not offended. That's fine. I'm okay guys. <laughs> so you don't have to get involved in these industries. And I start to follow people in industries that I want to write for, work for, that kind of things. Here's what I do. I buy their content. If they make products, I buy it. I'm interested. I'm following their group. I'm in the things. It doesn't mean you have to go out and buy their like $700 course, right? So you start to follow them. You engage with their content. You follow, you sign up for the email list, all these things, because there will be a window where they're going to mention they need somebody, right? This is how I've gotten like 80% of my clients outside of just like, they like me as a person and they're like, Hey, we have some things we need to like, you're, you're fun to engage with on Twitter. Like, great. Let's hire you. You know, that kind of thing. Like there will be this opening where they say, Hey, we need a writer. We're looking for someone or some, I, I have pounced on tweets from like CEOs when they're like, Oh, I'm like so overwhelmed with like email marketing. I can't believe it. I'm like, <laughs> that. <laughs> hi, I'm here. <laughs> pounce, pounce and strike when the iron's hot because you've consumed their content. So you know their voice and know what they want and what they're looking for. And they may like you because you've already engaged with their stuff, but at least you have an idea of like who they are, what they've published, what they've created and you are there to strike when the iron is hot. Okay. That is the secret. That is the secret to almost all of my big contracts that are ongoing, that are clients, that are influencers, all of this. The pounce. <laughs> Stalking to the pounce. <laughs> you know, there's always a point where someone is like, oh, I need a graphic designer. Like I'm so overwhelmed with all of these like stupid Instagram stories. Blah. Or, you know, sometimes you just suggest it. Like a lot of the times CEOs are overwhelmed and they don't talk about it. And you're like, 
you didn't see like okay they haven't published a blog in like three months <laughs> me and uh you can be like hey you know like i noticed you guys haven't been publishing lately like here's some ideas for blogs you have to kind of put that effort forward right one thing i also do to usually land almost every contract i uh, pitch um not to brag but i do i'm really good at this now I will create a whole proposal. Sometimes I usually use Notion and I create a whole proposal of like what it could look like. Especially if I'm pitching, let's say I'm pitching like a whole bunch of blogs, right? I'll put together an entire content calendar of like 40 to 50 ideas with like uh, the whole Kanban board and a calendar underneath. And so show them like, hey, here's like, here's just an idea of like what you can need. All, you need to put your clients in position to just say yes. Yes. How much? When can, like, buy now is what you need to do. Don't ever email somebody with, like, hey, I'm here to help. Whatever you need, don't make them think. That's not what they want. <laughs> Copywriting is dating. I'll say it in every video. You don't want to message somebody, like, hey let me take you out some time like you just tell me when and where it's like oh my god i have to decide like that's i'm tired <laughs> so assume that your clients are overwhelmed they're exhausted you do the work for them which is a lot of work to do up front but then they're like yes all they have to say is yes how can i pay you buy now yes i want that you've already done all the thinking for me and they may have some tweets and ideas and changes whatever but like you've done the mental load for them cool so anyway everybody gets this completely wrong they think me 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 what is my website what is my blog gonna look like how are your clients to find me all of these things and they spend absolutely no time thinking about clients and what they want which is first of all the number one rule of copy it has nothing to do with you i don't care who you are and what you think and what your opinions are everything has to do with the people you're selling to so you need to do that for your own business and for your own client hunting um what other notes did i have really quick so the secret really is to just be involved in the industries this is why when you get involved in an industry you'll notice that like let's say you wanted to be in the fitness world you will quickly notice that every top fitness influencer knows each other whether they like each other or not is a whole entire different topic but they know each other. They all know each other. It is a small circle at the top in every industry. Because so many people are focused on themselves the whole time. They're not thinking like, okay, I love Alpha Elite. It's a, it's a giant fitness chain clothing gear company. If I wanted to pitch Alpha Elite for writing copy, which, you know, they did use a little help with their copy. It's a, it's, it's reliant heavily on the man who has started it and his brand a little bit. It's starting to grow outside of him and his work, um, and be a standalone. Anyway, I would find all of the employees on Instagram, which they're all there because of course, uh, you know, and engage with their content and engage. And I've seen, they've been like, Hey, they're building a giant warehouse and stuff and they're a giant company location physical location and they've been like hey yeah we're hiring contractors now i would have struck so hard if i wanted it i, I don't really i'm already so full with other things um but they've said it like three times now right so pouncing on these opportunities when they present themselves requires you to be interested and involved in the industry that you want to be in and you need to follow people you need to follow people who follow them like you need to get involved and start talking with them the harshest reality that you need to accept as a freelancer which will also free you in so many ways is that nobody gives a shit about you right like none of my clients a lot of you watch my content but none of my clients for the most part mine is like a few handful that have seen like a few videos here and there like give a shit about my content right and that's so freeing because first of all, I can make whatever content I want. But secondly, it's because they care about how I help them. They don't care about what I say on the internet unless I'm like a racist idiot, then like, yeah, they care. But like, 
it's freeing that nobody cares about you. Oh my God. Like in a way, right? Like I hope that you have people and friends in your personal life that like care about you and as a person, you know, but that's different. And you just have to get out there and start caring about people. And the faster you get out there and start caring about people and being out there and offering to help and like solve their problems, the faster people will find you. That is it. Okay. That's the whole secret. That's it. That's literally years of networking that has taken me way too long to learn. <sighs> Where my apartment is located is not very efficient for filming videos. Anyway, so <laughs> Uh, uh, a few months, few months, few months. That's it. And then I'm free. Okay. But, um, so how to know if they're a good client fit, right? And of course this video is getting long and I should have just made this two videos, but that's okay. I, you need to figure out what kinds of people you did along with. I would analyze your friends and people in your life. I know that a lot of people don't like to equate like clients with like friends because that's a gray line and a lot of times you don't want to blend those two like you don't really want your clients to become your friends not really because it really made some like it can make your life annoying in a way that you don't want but for the most part almost all of my clients for me you need to figure out what works for you but for me my clients are people that I would actually hang out with and like grab a drink with, right? Like we did go and have like dinner and just chat business and it wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to like peel my skin off with a toothpick the whole time. <laughs> it took me a long time to learn that. And you know, I just thought that like business was business and it didn't matter if I got along with them or not. And it matters a lot. Um, you know, even my best paying clients didn't always fit in that category and I should have saved myself a lot of time and energy and money <laughs> insanity actually uh not working with them because that's just what I like now you may need to have your own parameters of clients one thing I did that really saved me so much time is every single time I worked with a client I made a list of things like I loved and I didn't like about them or like red flags you know and you know, like I've noticed clients who uh, complain about like, oh, every freelancer I've ever hired is like the worst. I'm like, mm, sweetie, you should look in the mirror because it's just like dating if all of your exes are crazy. Hmm. It's you. Um, <laughs> but that is it. You know, like you'll start to notice, right? And you don't, I, pro tip, don't put names to your burn list, okay? Like write it on a piece of paper in very vague, weird, uh, kind of gray, non-specifics. But like, you know, I have clients where I'm like, okay, called me at two in the morning to discuss this project. Like always is late on things. And then I go back to the beginning emails and I'm like, oh, they were always late responding to my first emails. There were these like red flags in our initial kickoff call, like all of these things. So now, Oh, now <laughs> I did like cry for 20 year old me and all the shit she tolerated of like this entire list of just blah. And now I'm like, oh, my clients are so great. Like I just, I'm so happy right now with my current client and workload and like everything that like I do. I just could like hug all of my clients for like five minutes every time I even hear from them. It's not like that stomach like whoop. Mm, mm feeling that comes which is a red flag <laughs> also like dating if you know you hear from someone it makes you want to throw up inside like that's probably not your soulmate uh, <laughs> you know whatever you do you boo I don't know what to tell you uh, I'm not a dating expert but but one thing I can pass on for sure is that if don't spend any time trying to convince someone why content writing or copywriting or social media or graphic design or whatever it is you do is valuable. If they don't get it, I'm like, honey boo boo, you can call me when you understand why this matters. I do not convince people why they need copywriting. That's not my job. Like that's, that's not what I want because if they're not convinced on the value, if you think they're going to pay me thousands of dollars, <laughs> to create and it won't be like the most annoying problematic you know like think of the last thing that you paid for that you didn't value um and how even if it was like ten dollars 
you were just so mad about it, right? And you don't want clients like that who are just like, they're doing blogging because they think it's important, but they think it's stupid overall. Those are the worst clients because they hate every single time you invoice them. They don't think what you do is valuable at all and that will make your life hell. Find people who are very grateful for what you do and are just, just want to hug you. My clients are so happy for what I do when they're like, when we see results and they're grateful for those results and they understand that like increasing like click in rates and email subscribers and all these things leads to business down the line for them and they're so happy I'm there helping improve the funnel like in the beginning. It's magic guys and it takes a while to get there but that is it. So um anyway that's it. I just thought I have an email from one of my clients I love so hmm I'm having a great day. Anyway that is it. Thank you for uh tolerating my absence from the internet we are back to the content hustle Brapa. what was that <laughs> okay i'm going on vacation starting tomorrow for like a few days so i'm just in that like mm, i need a vacation i need a break mindset so that is it guys bye <laughs>